10, 9, ignition sequence start, 6. Hello, and welcome to Rocket Fuel, your daily update of everything that's happening in the Rocket Pool community. My name is Wack. Today is August 10th, and we've got a whole packed episode for you all. So let's get started without wasting any time. Um, Coinbase Ventures, you know, the um, investment arm of Coinbase that you all know that as the exchange, and part of this tweet today, uh, so a tweet thread today saying, exciting news to share. Coinbase Ventures recently made a strategic investment in Rocket Pool by purchasing RPL tokens from the Rocket Pool team. We've been um, able to get to know uh, Dave and Darren um, over the past year, and we have deep admiration for their commitment to building one of the largest decentralized staking networks over the past six years. Rocket Pool is le um, leading liquid staking token Ethereum, allowing users to stake ETH while retaining liquidity with an emphasis on decentralization. The Rocket Pool network now consists of over 3,100 node operators with more than 780,000 staked ETH. In addition to our efforts, this on-chain summer with the launch of build on base mainnet um, we believe scaling ethereum's infrastructure in safe decentralized manner is critical to bringing the next billion users on chain we know the rocket pool team shares this belief and we're delighted to support them via an active participation in the oracle dao and using eth from our corporate balance sheets to operate several hundred nodes, I think they mean validators, on the Rocket Pool network alongside our friends, Unit 410. We're honored to help support Rocket Pool's long term growth and look forward to engaging with and contributing to the Rocket Pool community in the years ahead. So, first of all, this tweet is like super bullish. Um, it sounds really good. And um, it's just, yeah, that's this, the, you know, Coinbase Ventures, of course, like a very well respected. Um, branch like you know they they're the ones who are involved in a lot of angel and investment seed rounds and stuff they come out and part of this tweet saying that um they're deeply aligned with rocket pool and they want to they want to buy rpl and that what they bought they bought rpl and that they are going to run validators or are running validators so this news is is really huge and it's super positive and like yeah there's there's some question marks though right like the first is um you know rocket fuel long time rocket fuel listeners will know that you know we found um that coinbase ventures um had purchased rpl from the team in january and that was just before i think around the time that they were becoming all down members um so that was known um so far you know in the in the hour since this news has broken um we haven't um really been able to find any evidence of a new buy so i'm not sure if they are referring to that old buy or if there's a new buy that we haven't found yet um i'll share that information as it becomes clear um the main piece of information here um that really jumped out at me is um this tweet right here when they say that um when they say that they um operate seven seven several hundred nodes on the rocket pool network alongside our friends at unit four of uh, unit 410 now the several hundred nodes what they mean is 700 um, several hundred validators but um this is this is a huge news like that that coinbase will be um staking actively on rocket pool um it makes a lot of sense like i've been saying this for a while that um you know the rocket pool could be used as like a white label service where um, on the front side, you have any kind of centralized entity, um, and on the back side, they are um, using Rocket Pool because the yield is is so much higher. Um, they can keep they can pocket that difference for themselves. Um, it just makes sense for them to do that. But um, this is something that I'll definitely be following really closely, and I'll let you all know um, what happens with this because I think it's it's really huge news potentially, or it might be a bit of a nothing burger if it is just the the old news that they're rehashing <laughs> i was joking in uh, trading that um you know this is old news and that coinbase are just putting out these tweets to try to pump their bags <laughs> but, but yeah it's it's still it's it's really cool to see that you know they they still are putting out these tweets and um yeah i'll let you all know what comes of that 
Okay, next we had this tweet from, uh, well, not a tweet from, uh, Pateris shared this tweet on um, on Discord here that says, um, Ethereum Singapore introducing Rocket Pool as a proud sponsor of Ethereum Singapore 2023. We're bringing together developers, builders, and creators on one platform, demonstrating what the Ethereum ecosystem can do. What are you waiting for? So um, this, I guess, is confirmation that the Rocket Pool team will have... Um, representation at um, ethereum singapore which is taking place from the 10th to the 12th of september so it's just in in a month's time um, that's going to be really exciting for the people who are going out there um, singapore is a little bit too far for me so i'm not going to be attending this one uh, but um, i'm sure that those who are attending will have a really great time meeting um, the team members and um, other uh, rocket poolers that that make their way there um, I remember in Denver, it was a really wonderful experience, like hanging out with the team and just like you know to talk to all the different team members. But um, this is this is really nice news that's come out of here. And then um, Mav here um, um, also says we're pretty much confirmed for Istanbul too. So that's um, really exciting as well. Istanbul um, is going to be happening in November, and um, I think there's a bunch of like really cool people heading out to um, Istanbul too. Here, Yorick says that Istanbul will have um, Butter and uh, Nixo, um, and um, they're going to have two days ETH Staker conference that they'll be kind of representing out there. So that's going to be really awesome. Like if I could only choose one to go to, it would definitely be Istanbul. Um, it, it it looks really cool. I think uh, yeah. Here, uh, Yorick shared some photos of Istanbul as well, and they're all photos of Turkish food. And I love Turkish food, so look at that. That just looks magnificent. But um, anyway, I'm getting all hungry now. Uh, <laughs> uh, that that you know, if you're into conferences, if you're into like meeting rocket poolers at conferences, you'll have two opportunities in the next few months to do that. And that's really exciting. Um, okay. Um, here there was an update from Mav about some um some protocol updates so let's let's see what Mav's saying he says um hey everyone a few updates from me you may have already noticed but our planned ama with ssv unfortunately has been postponed until next week in its place we'll likely have more casual chit chat event here on discord tomorrow to run through some of the uh, recent happenings so keep an eye out in the event section for that um he goes on to say we've had some feedback about the discord rules especially rules three and four um and six um, which we're going to be increasingly enforced going forwards in case of significant slash repeated violations as you know moderation here is an exceptionally light touch relative to most of the communities and this will continue to be the case in the case of rule six new ch a new channel will be set up for anything featuring other staking protocols and that way people wanting to talk about the wider ecosystem can continue to do so while keeping the main channels focus on rocket pool which is after all why most of us are here so he says there's also going to be a new opt-in role that's being created for anyone who wants to be pinged about ecosystem updates that might not be worthy of protocol or release post and um, keep an eye out for these discord changes coming soon and um, then um, Va um, Mav also makes it officially says finally it's official rocket pool is going to Singapore let us know if you'll be attending token 2049 um, ethereum singapore or digital asset week by reacting to the posts here so then you can go to the conference um conference post um section of the discord and he says um drop a thumbs up if you're going to singapore or token 2049 or um digital asset week so those are all taking place in singapore between the 10th and the 20th of september i'm not sure if the team is going to be around for the whole part of that or who's going to be around for that but um that's um definitely um definitely cool so yeah thanks for sharing that mav um Okay, next we have some really, um, something really, okay. So um, in yesterday's episode, we talked about how, um, you know, the sentiment in trading was really low and how um, El Presidank uh, kind of came in and like, you know, said that he'll match all buys and that like really led to a whole lot of hype and a whole lot of, um, a whole lot of, um, like momentum and shift in sentiment well yesterday we had another version of something similar to that um index corp was buying rpl and they were pumping the price now what is index corp index corp is um a service that uses um like they do token sets so they have different versions of tokens that they release they take products on the market tokenize them and release those tokens one of their more popular tokens is something called the dpi which is the DeFi pulse index and for those of you who've been following rocket fuel for a while you know that they added the rpl token to that 
a little while ago, maybe a few months ago. So since then, the RPL price has been down a lot. So um, every period or every like whatever their period is, they rebalance their um, allocations for tokens that make up the DPI token. So uh, one of the things they ended up doing yesterday was buying a whole lot of RPL to um, kind of um, bring it back into balance to where they wanted it. So I'm just going to go. Sh I'm just going to show you the bot from the ping service here. Um, and how how it's been very 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 green these last few days so um let's start with yeah yesterday right so um we started the buys coming through i, I think this was yeah here was the beginning up 5 50 eastern time and you can see that they're buying around 15 14 eth at a time um there's one two three um four five six seven eight nine ten um, eleven uh, twelve thirteen <laughs> um yeah 13 buys that they did of around 14 ETH each so they bought approximately 200 eth worth of rpl somewhere around that amount um which is which is phenomenal like it really um that was a really nice thing yesterday to kind of boost the community and like boost morale um but it, it's it's cool that you know the dpi token is still holding on to um rpl and actually rebalancing into it instead of um removing it from from their token um i think that it's um, really promising that you know they're kind of doubling down on rpl as the price has gone down um, and i hope that it um works really well for their for their tokens that that was really nice to see Okay, um, next um, in the um, staking discussion thread, um, Val had an update um, of his um, his uh, proposal that at the, he I guess he felt that the original write up was a little bit too researchy. So he's kind of um, made a new write up where the ideas are pretty much the same, but now um, the information is proposed and in, in, in presented in a much more streamlined way. And, um, you know, this new write-up has already gotten a whole lot of uh, positive feedback in terms of presentation and, like, clarity of information. So I thought I'd just give it a quick look over at, um, during Rocket Fuel, so just to let you all know that this exists, and you can go and read this if you are curious about the tokenomics changes discussions that are taking place. So, um, you know, it's on the GitHub. It's uh, Val's GitHub with his thoughts. And this is new staking rework proposal. So uh, there's some new things in here. Um, so he says the goals are concentrate spend on uh, rocket pool goals, particularly incentivizing node operators to create our ETH supply by rewarding making more mini pools and rewarding LEB eights more than um, um, mini pool sixteens. And he says avoid spend that doesn't support rocket pool goals, uh, particularly unnecessarily awarding speculation. He says folks shouldn't feel trapped. Some exit friction is okay. Predictable is good, and we shouldn't be extortionate. And folks shouldn't feel they have to actively modify allocations for every little ratio change. So then there's changes here, and some of these are new. He says rewards will scale differently. Um, see details below for the math. He says adding a mini pool will increase RPL rewards, even if you already have enough staked RPL. This is new. Converting um, um, mini pool 16 to two lb 8s will increase rewards, even if you already have enough RPL staked. This is new. Um, you need a staked RPL value of more than 10 more than equal to 10% borrowed ETH to get RPL rewards. This is the same as before. Staking more RPL means more rewards. This is unchanged, but, and now it's without a maximum. This is new. Um, however, beyond 15% borrowed ETH, additional rewards go up slower and slower. So it'll be, uh, and this is new as well. So the curve, it's not a linear effect. There's a curve and that will be, um, yeah, that, that'll change. So um, there's more changes here as well. And you can go and read the context and, you know, there's nice charts and um, there's this section that has a simulator as well where you can work out like, you know, how much RPL you have staked and how much ETH you have staked and how it's going to impact you. And um, you can you can go and have a look at all this information on on the on the new updated uh, proposal. Um, go check it out. Thanks, Val, for putting that together. Okay, so Joe yesterday put out this uh, uh, message saying uh, version um, one dot ten dot one coming out tonight, and then a little while later, um, 
you know we got this update saying hello um node operators today we released version 1.10.1 of the smart node this is a medium priority update for node operators uh, using lighthouse or lodestar for anyone that generates their own rewards tree or for anyone that wants to expose their prometheus api port for everyone else this is a low priority update below is a list of the key changes the full patch notes are on github and then says there's important dates that, you know like for the rolling rewards etc it says they updated um, lord star and lighthouse uh it has lord lighthouse as an important change um that you know you might want to um, check out this is something that i'm really happy about um here um joe put in a rocket pool node send now accepts an arbitrary token address as the token to send instead of just rpl fs rpl eth or um, our ETH so you can use it to safely move tokens that are currently in your node wallet directly via the command line interface now why is this important and why is this something that I'm really happy about well um, Diva uh, which is a staking token uh, service we're going to talk about a little bit later they um, airdropped um, their Diva token to uh, Rocket Pool node operators now there was no way for node operators to get that off their node machines their node wallets without um putting their node keys into a hardware wallet or a, a, a hot wallet whatever I guess if you wanted to live life on the edge and there was no way to move those tokens off there without like putting your keys in something else now a lot of people were hesitant to do that so um, Joe added this um, uh, this ability to send arbitrary tokens uh, so now if you do in the future which i hope you know node operators will get airdrops and uh, if you get any airdrops coming to, towards you in the next you know in perpetuity then you would be able to uh, move those off your node um, and send them to um, you know whichever address you want so that's really exciting and um, i'm really happy about that and then there's some other stuff here as well about like uh, some minor bugs that were fixed um, with help of Fornax and um, some other things as well. So um, there's a guide and then yeah, there you go. So thanks Joe for the update. Um, of course, as whenever there's a new update, um, there's always um, client releases right after and it happens again. So <laughs> Yorick says, uh, um, Joe does it again. Thank you. And then he says releases Rocky Pool node. Um, so Geth have put out their new um, release version one. 1.12.1 um, so you can go and look at that and um, I guess if you want to um, update your um, geth you can do it manually through the um, user interface on your node okay so <laughs> something really interesting happened yesterday where Hasu um, who is a researcher with a uh, no, strategic actually let me just see his actual titles are here in his uh, bio he's a strategy lead at flashports and a strategic advisor at Lido um, for those of you who um, might have only recently come to know Hasu because he was on Monday's episode of Bankless talking about Lido's dominance in Ethereum staking well it was a huge surprise to get Hasu coming into trading and saying hi and Jasper says wow hey Hasu and then like Noshua um, Sneaky um, and others said um, <laughs> hi <laughs> Sneaky asked if he's here for the El Prezidank match which was which was a nice joke but um, Hasu came by at like 10 p.m. Uh, 10 a.m. Um, Eastern time and then didn't um, say anything for another hour um, at which point he says Jasper just wanted to say hi I think we talk past each other a lot but rarely with each other um, and then he says, um, solo staking may be small in size, but it's an important backbone of Ethereum security. I have a ton of respect for Rocket Pool and the ETH staker communities for making that as easy and capital efficient as possible. And then, um, then there was, um, the Jasper replied by saying, very happy to see you here. I deeply respect the thought you put into your work. Um, I'm really digging the suave Pepsi Eigenlayer narrative that's brewing. Um, and then Jasper went on to say, if you're up for it, Hasu, I'd love to host you on the Twitter space and talk about the history of Flashbots, MEV Boost, Suave, etc. And Hasu said, I'd be down. So um, this was really nice. Um, little really nice interaction hasu like um like jasper says you know there's a lot of respect for hasu um and 
sadly you know there's some tribalism between rocket pool and um lido well not sadly there is <laughs> there's maybe some legitimate reasons to have some tribalism between those two factions however that doesn't mean you know we can't treat uh, other people with respect and hasu is a very well respected member of the ethereum community who's made like um huge contributions to ethereum for better or worse as, as people might say but he's definitely a very well respected member of the ethereum community so um one of the things that I really wanted to highlight here is like just like I just want to give a shout out to Jasper like I know that you know I talk about Jasper on Rocket Fuel a lot I cover Jasper's tweets on Rocket Fuel a lot like just share his ideas on Rocket Fuel a lot but Jasper's one of the people in the Rocket Pool community who has really bridged like our community and the Ethereum slash crypto ecosystem on a wider scale and I think a whole lot of people who are very well respected in crypto really know who Jasper is and like really respect his um, ideas and not just related to Rocket Pool as well like you know about other things too so I'm 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 really proud to say that you like um, Jasper is like one of the people who represents us because I think he does an amazing job and um, I'm really proud to have him here so I'll definitely be one of those people who listens to that Twitter space with Hasu um, I think that'd be really really fun to watch and listen to um, and I'm sure it would be like riveting listening because Jasper is just so well rounded and his knowledge of Ethereum is fantastic so yeah Okay, so next I want to cover this um, thing by Pateris here, um, and Pateris is working on this. This I'm looking at um, a thread here about um, rocket scan development, and um, he is working on um, integrations with SSV that you can basically start a validator straight from a browser instead of having a node machine. So he says with the rocket scan pilot, you can register a node, launch a mini pool, then split your validator key into multiple shares and register it with SSV. And they will run the validator for you all with some uh, button clicks in the browser. I don't have smart node installed and my validator is a testing, which is really, really cool to see. Um, we talked about this in rocket fuel before. And then here there's a video as well of how it works that you can give it a watch. Um, and it's like 55 seconds so he's just kind of like showing you what um, the different stages are what it all looks like and some of the functionality that is now being built into rocket scan um, this is just um, at the moment it's just like research that um, Pateris is doing but um, I think you know he applied for a grant to make these kind of things like a formal like front end for rocket pool um, and um, I think the GMC is going to be um, considering that again either in August uh, sorry in September with a new uh, period that's going to start or um, through other discussions that that will definitely make available to all of you as they're happening but this is really wonderful that um, you know for some people now you will actually be able to run a rocket pool um, node and validator without having any hardware at all the way it works is like you um set up all the stuff using rocket scan um, and get everything like kind of um set up um and once it's all set up then you get your key and you divide it out and give it to people on the ssv network who will kind of like um run your validator for you basically so they will charge a fee but the idea is that that fee will be smaller than um all nodes so this will be like a, a a new totally decentralized all nodes basically which would be revolutionary technology so like pateris is doing some really really awesome work and um people just like you know here saying this is awesome um great work um managed to get it working before the twitter space um also works with no no safe where well, jasper is very pretty um <laughs> Prada says that you turn into the blue side and says the orange side because uh, blue is the color of, um, of Diva. Um, so Patera says you can already register a node and launch mini pools with the address on Gurley. Um, SSV stuff will take some time. It depends on the weather forecast. Uh, but yeah, there's a whole lot of stuff going on um, and it's going to be really interesting to see how that keeps going and developing. Oh yeah, we already covered that video. Okay, um, next I want to couple a couple of couple of teams that have reached out to uh, rocket pool to like build relationships one we have here with zero x lucky saying hi team um i'm with block pi network block pi is a multi-chain globally distributed rpc provider dedicated and offering low cost high performance and low latency rpc solutions for pioneering projects like yours so really appreciate if someone could get in touch with me um and in charge of partnerships thank you so pateras and tags maverick 
And then another one here as well, Vibrant V says, hey, Rocket Pool team, I'm marketing representative of BTS Labs, the ultimate all-in-one incubator marketing and listing service provider, a capital venture with high capacity and expertise to create massive media awareness across larger community, reaching out to millions of users and beyond, using it in um, widespread of influence across blockchain markets in Asia. Where we seek to collaborate with your project to share mutual benefits. If you're interested in either of our services, kindly let me know and we can initiate further discussion. Um, thanks in advance so this seems like a copy paste kind of like a intro message but hey who knows what might come from it um but i was like uh, sharing these as you all know because um, i'm kind of curious to see how like the threads of these uh, conversations get played out in the future Okay, so uh, talking about El Prezidank earlier, um, El Prezidank yesterday said that um, they only have 22 ETH left from their original 600 um, and 65 uh, staking, now a validator staking and 36 are in pre-launch and a whole bunch of RPL, I think 200 ETH worth of RPL was bought by El Prezidank and staked. So that was um, really, really exciting to see and um, I'm really happy about that. Um, they're definitely like mark i think um it kind of marked the bottom in this period right now i don't know if it's going to mark the like you know post atlas bottom but um it's definitely led to a shift in sentiment and then you know with the coinbase news today the index co-op stuff yesterday um and el president today before that you know there's been a lot of buying that's been happening and um nothing like there's nothing like some buying to uh change the sentiment in the place Okay, um, I've got some sad news to share here and I'm using this as a kind of a cautionary tale for you all to like kind of um, keep in mind. So here you, we have Juliosa who says, a year ago I staked 4,500 RPL in Bancor. A few days ago I went to withdraw everything and what I thought was my reward was actually the total amount, 755 RPL only and the rest is gone. Uh, I asked in Bancor and they deleted my messages. So um, what happened is Bancor basically people kind of realized that their one-sided liquidity providing was uh, an impermanence loss was kind of like a scam pretty much or they had like deep flaws in their uh, tokenomics and the Bangkok pretty much collapsed. So um, Julie also like lost a whole lot um, of their of their rewards. Um, Yorick replied by saying there's no RPL staking as such outside of the node. And this sounds like um, they were basically using the private liquidity. They swapped it around, tried to get yield. And when you withdrew it, they swapped it back to RPL and it was worth way less than what you deposited. Yeah, and uh, Julius says there's some kind of staking liquidity pool there. I'm wrecked. So this is really horrible. Yeah, Bancor tried to do single-sided um, liquidity providing and it didn't work. They're kind of balancing it out with their token. They inflate their token to pay for impermanence loss and like the money that you'd lose. So there was this huge sell pressure on their token. There was like infinite like mint basically. It was just really badly designed. But at the time it looked really attractive because it was kind of like working. But as soon as you know you saw chinks in the armor, it all just kind of collapsed. But um, I just wanted to, to kind of show this because um, you know, as RPL is getting um, brought into more and more DeFi stuff in the coming weeks and months, um, please remember that there are risks involved with any DeFi actions that you take with your tokens. Um, you could lose everything you put in, like our friends at Bankless like to say. Okay, next we had this uh, po a couple of things from Diva. So Prada has been popping into um, the Discord quite a lot recently um, and kind of like just talking about Diva a little bit, but just talking in general and just like sharing good ideas. Um, and here he says that, the test net for Diva is coming soon uh, and uh, Pateris points out this is just the user interface to test the contract deposit and withdrawal functionalities but in the background there's nothing happening no validators were created etc so they're getting um they're getting um you know moving forward to getting closer to going live they've actually got their first vote live on tally as well so if you're a, a delegate if you're a token holder then um you can go and vote on that um I think there may be a possibility of future airdrops based on people who actually particip participate in governance, especially since not all the airdrop was claimed. And I think what might happen is the airdrop that was not claimed might go to people who are active in the community. So definitely keep that in mind. And then there, there's this post from um, Diva Staking where they uh, kind of explain how there's two different Divas. So there's the Diva Protocol and there's Diva Staking. And Diva Staking is the one that we talk about in Rocket Fuel um, and the ones that did the airdrop to node operators. It's just the two projects, both called Diva, both have tokens called Diva. So um, it's something to definitely be careful of and um, uh, keep in mind before you, um, before you buy any tokens when they might become purchasable. 
okay, I'm finishing the episode today with this really nice story. I said one of our own did Dibsy um, is getting married tomorrow. Uh, the Rocket Pool community sends their love uh, to the happy couple to commemorate the union. There's a pop you can buy to show your support. The pop will cost about ten dollars, um, and all the money from the sale will go to Dibsy and Bree as they start their married lives together. You can buy the pop here, and then there's a link to the pop in the description. Of the pop says. Um, Dibsy met Brie in January 2021 and we in the Rocket Pool community feel like we've been along for the whole ride. Now, two years later, these wonderful people are getting married. We are sending our congrats and love on this amazing day. The port were designed by Shipfrin and distributed by me. Um, and of course, I didn't really distribute it. I just put it in the pop checkout. So you can um, go there and you can buy the pop now. Um, it's ten, about $10, so I know it's a little bit expensive, but um, I think it'll be a really nice wedding gift if like a bunch of us bought the pop because um, it's going to a really nice course. So on that note, I'm going to end today's episode. I hope you all had a lovely day and I will see you all soon. Bye.